When I first watched The Vampire Diaries, I fell in love with the character Damon. When I first watched American Horror Story Murder House, I fell in love with the character Tate. When I first watched American Psycho, I fell in love with the character Patrick Bateman. I then realised that all of these characters had something in common. They were presented as either the antagonist or the psychopathic character. So why do I feel such an attraction or fascination towards each of them? Even when they do horrific things, hurt others and are all around not good people. Do I need a psychoanalysis? Yes, I do. And so do you if you clicked on this video. Psychopaths often appear on screen as charming, confident and charismatic. These are common traits that most females find attractive in men because of various factors like demonstrating that they're competent in their abilities and capable of overcoming tough situations or challenges. This presents them as ideal and reliable partners. Charm and charisma fused together indicate a high level of navigating communication well and a strong emotional intelligence. Evolutionary biology also suggests that these traits link back to the biological need to reproduce, gather resources and form stable social bonds. Morbid curiosity is defined as a desire to seek out information about dangerous, unsettling or disturbing phenomena, often to comfort yourself on the macabre, which is the gruesome, the grotesque or concerned with death. Being curious about danger, disaster or death lets us investigate and process our fears and anxieties in a safe space without actually physically being harmed. We have an innate unending hunger for knowledge and wisdom, desiring to become a master of control on topics associated with fear and uncertainty. The sublime is a concept mostly discussed by philosophers Edmund Burke and Immanuel Kant, referring to the experience of overwhelming greatness, transcending the possibility of calculation, measurement, or imitation. Although the sublime is normally associated with beauty and goodness, it can also be associated with the gruesome and grotesque and evoke senses of the sublime within us. They confront us with natural or supernatural forces beyond our control or rationality. There is a thrill in this paradoxical fear and awe that resides in the external world. Simultaneously, we're attracted to and repelled by the immense power of what we will never completely comprehend. The aesthetics of horror continues to expand on this idea as Noel Carroll challenges the notion of pleasure derived from beauty or the good. Instead, the horror genre engages our morbid curiosity, playing on the seduction of moral ambiguity. Our enjoyment and thrill of a horror movie stem from a deeper engagement and pleasure into the mystery of the unknown and the craving to find out what's going on. Aristotle's design of catharsis in tragedy exhibits much influence in the realms of literary and dramatic theory. This is the idea that when we view a tragedy we release our pent-up emotions and excessive passions which then can purify our soul. It further involves a transformation stage in which the viewer's psychological state is changed and there is a profound learning and an emotional harmony thereafter. To stand out is alluring. Attraction to psychopaths on screen could also be due to their divergence from the norm. It invites an intellectual, emotional and morally stimulating conversation. It pushes our boundaries of what it means to be who we are. We have a natural inclination towards novelty and personalities that have distinct traits from us. It piques our curiosity. This curiosity relates to the need to understand and make sense of the world around us, especially aspects that fall outside our typical radar of daily experiences. Through these unconventional traits, we're challenged to think about our assumptions of the world. It can be inspiring to observe other people's fearlessness when facing danger. The courage in confronting fears or anxieties can resonate with us deeply. It also helps us explore the limitations of courage and resilience. It broadens our understanding of our human potential. Psychopaths display grey areas of morality in which we can reflect on our own moral nature and inhibitions. It further ignites this depth and complexity of the human soul. When we witness characters' background stories, we can see the intricacies of their mind. It mirrors interest in the witnessing of ourselves. These complex characters are unpredictable and adds elements of surprise and novelty. 
In the Adam and Eve allegory, it is certain that the unknown incites intrigue, as we desire the fruits of knowledge. The Christian narrative portrays themes of temptation, redemption, and the inherent duality of mankind. When we eat the forbidden fruit, we become aware of our shadows and darkness that is within us and exists in the world. We become more self-conscious and aware of our imperfections, impulses, desires, and aspects that may be seen as sinful or outside of the typical moral principles. We are in a constant journey of understanding and integrating the darker facets of our human nature. To gather a humble knowing of this fallibility of man and attempt to strive for moral and spiritual wisdom to guide us is the ultimate good. It's important to be conscious of our human nature and the potential for darkness to overcome our identities. Have you ever caught yourself saying, I would never do that, or that would never happen to me when watching something morally wrong? We all would like to think that we're good people. Even the bad people think that they're good people. This lack of recognizing of your own capabilities for evil makes you a fool, a puppet to be pulled around. While it's incredibly essential that we acknowledge when someone could be manipulating us, it's also equally important to see yourself as a potential manipulator. Crafting ethical boundaries or a guidebook for your decisions could help you see all sides of the reality of you. Have you ever found that you're attracted to someone that is the complete opposite to you? This duality could be named as the principle of complementarity. This is seen in light and dark, good and evil, yin and yang, and masculine and feminine. We pursue what is opposite to us because we feel there is a completeness and balance. It's due to wanting to be whole in ourselves and becoming self-realized or self-actualized, which is also known as individuation according to Carl Jung. We're also attracted to this because we want to see more of these in ourselves. Being challenged in our core beliefs, values or perspectives is necessary for growth and learning and becoming a better person. We are able to develop parts of ourselves that we might not often see or didn't even realise were there. I think we often like to assume that we want people around us that are exactly like us. I know I felt that in the past and still do now. And while we definitely need aspects of commonality to maintain balanced and healthy relationships where we feel safe to speak up and where we can relate with one another. I feel like to fully embrace our greatest potential requires unconventional ideas and perhaps ideas that frustrate, annoy or confuse us. Through this exposure we can create a stronger identity of who we are. Reflecting and pondering in relaxing creative activities has help me explore my inner world and I have found it beneficial in becoming more aware of my unconscious qualities. Personally I like to journal and meditate the most but also colouring in my colouring book is very therapeutic and I really love having my hands active and I'm concentrating on something that isn't words because I do a lot of reading and writing in my day to day. So colour and also not thinking of what I'm drawing but just filling in the colours that way. I found that I have this space for my mind to go into and kind of like meditate but I'm doing something with my hands so I feel a little bit more in the present moment but I also like to do classic meditation as well. I've recently been intrigued by mythology, tropes and the hero's journey. I've noticed that the psychopathic characters I'm talking about always seem to have a love interest which tends to save them or change them in some way. It creates this ideal perfect fantasy of these characters becoming good again through the power of love. I ate this up as a teenager and I still secretly love this kind of story. It's very gripping. There's some hope. Even the most troubled soul can find salvation and redemption through this profound emotional connection. I could be the one to save them, to pull them out of the dark, to lead them into the light. Of course people can change. I mean, as humans we believe in this, otherwise there is no hope for humanity and that we will all crumble into oblivion. We are constantly changing internally and externally throughout our experiences whilst also maturing in our appearance. Well written and captivating characters in cinema offer this redemption arc. For example, Jamie Lannister in Game of Thrones. At the start of the show, he was an egotistical, selfish, stubborn man who changes and shifts and we are taken throughout his journey of becoming more aware of himself and of other people and caring about others outside of himself and his sister, Cersei. He becomes someone worth knowing 
and acts selflessly and even fights with his enemies for the sake of saving humanity. This gives us hope to those who have committed horrendous acts can still change and find redemption within themselves through genuine attempts to make amends and let themselves grow through their experiences. Ramsey Bolton, however, is a foil to Jamie because he was a straight up psychopath and he had no significant inner conflict or a desire for change. He did have confidence, charm and charisma, but he had no redeeming qualities or a love interest that might come in and save him. This made him a love to hate character and his unchanging nature carries a core theme in the show, an exploration of evil and the many choices that define us. An attraction to morally ambiguous characters in cinema like reflects through ideal personality traits, the allure of the forbidden, creating a sense of mystery and intrigue, the psychological principles of complementarity and the transformative potential of narrative arcs. The attraction to these characters on screen underpins the adventure for our desire for growth, moral complexity and the reconciliation of internal conflict. It highlights the power of storytelling which enhances our understanding of the human condition and the potential for evil. The journey of understanding your shadow self will be one that will last your entire lifetime. It will reveal much about yourself, about what drives you, what your desires are, your core beliefs, sides that you didn't even realise were within you. The characters in cinema that you feel drawn to challenges you to question, to get introspective and to get ultimately a little dark. We must delve into this darkness of our psyches and see what unpleasantness comes up because that is in fact still us. Just because you can't see it or you don't wish for it to be there doesn't mean that it isn't there. We can use this attraction to darkness to uncover our own darkness deep within us buried underneath societal conditioning and embarrassed repression. Think of this as your very own hero's journey. Document it through videos, photos and writing. In a few years, you'll want to look back at your thoughts, ideas and ways of seeing the world.